Hi, I'm Alice from UBTV and today we are here with Professor Evelyn Welsh. I'm Professor Evelyn Welsh. Evelyn. I'm the new Vice-Chancellor at the University of Bristol. I started about three and a half weeks ago and it's just been the most amazing introduction to a great university and a great city. So what in your career led you to this point? So what, what's your like major milestones if you take us back to America, right? So I'm American in origin. Uh, what led me to this is probably I'm the oldest of four children. <laughs> And my three siblings came very quickly mm -hmm. and that sort of sense of could you just look after something? Could you pick this up? Could you stop them fighting? Those gave me great skills from the age of around six to um, manage almost anything. But a combination of, of being an oldest child, very strong sense of responsibility, and then the learning that I did from raising my own very blended family of three children and three stepchildren, again, gave me a lot of sense of what it means to, to create a strong sense of values and community. So you talked about where you've come from. What about, like, so you said you've done three weeks so far. What, what's that been like? Well, it's not been the three weeks I expected. Um, the Queen died, yeah. very sadly, on day four, and that did mean that we had to um, go into a period of mourning and put a number of social events to one side. But it also meant that I had the extraordinary privilege of attending the service at Westminster Abbey. Wow. Absolutely. It was strangely intimate when you were there. I was very, very close um, to the front in the nave, and so I was able to see what was actually quite a small coffin with extraordinary heavy crown and scepter on it. So that sense of that responsibility and burden that she carried all her life. Was that interesting as an American being at the funeral, such like a British event? It is such a British event. Yeah. And I, I carry my Americanness with me deep inside, but I have been here for um, decades. So what have you got planned for the next month and the next year? What? So the next month, um, this month, is Black History mm -hmm. Month and so we've got quite a number of events including publishing the report into uh, the University of Bristol's uh, legacy and, and contacts with slavery and we will be consulting the wider community on issues about the original donations behind the um, university and, and trying to have a conversation, a collective conversation, about the complexities of our past. And then over the year, I, you, know, you never stop listening, you never stop learning, and I plan to go around and meet lots of students, lots of staff. Mm. Um, I got stopped for my first selfie yesterday oh, uh, with a member of um, the student body, um, and, and actually that made me feel rather um, like a celebrity. I'm going to have to ask, because I'm, I'm a student, and obviously my education last year was disrupted by strikes, and this week we've had picketing on campus just outside of here with Unison. Can you say anything about that? Absolutely. So I can say firstly that I'm, yeah, I can only apologise to the student body who've had Covid, who've had strikes, who've had disruptions to their education. It's, it's really tough and I absolutely understand how difficult it's been. I also understand that staff are really concerned and that issues around cost of living, around inflationary mm. pressures, and, and also around the sense that um, where's their voice and how it's heard. Yeah. So what I do want to ensure that we do is make sure that we have staff and students feeding into the university strategy and its delivery, that we all collectively have a really good understanding of how the finances, it may not be the most exciting thing, mm -hmm. um, but actually really understanding about the financial challenges and choices we need to make. These disputes, particularly with our um, main unions, are national disputes, mm -hmm. but we can't solve this dispute alone. So you're the first female vice-chancellor, we're women in this room, it's really good. Um, what's that been like? So I have often been the only woman 
in the room mm. uh, in my senior roles. What's really amazing is that I'm no longer the only female Vice-Chancellor. So I am the first Vice-Chancellor of the University of Bristol and what I'm so proud of is I'm the first female Vice-Chancellor of one of the very first universities to admit women in their own right. So it's a privilege, it's an honour. Uh, I would like people to see that leadership is for everyone and at every level. That sort of leads to my next question. I was going to ask, do you have any plans to open the door for more women leaders after you at Bristol? Like any like lasting change? So we have a great senior team. We mm. have our provost, Judith Squires. We have our registrar, Lucinda Parr. Um, actually, in terms of diversity, I will be looking to make sure we have as many men as we do women. It is really important to have diverse skills, mm. diverse voices. You are stronger as a diverse team. Yeah. Where I have concerns about the University of Bristol is the number of black staff uh, in our senior leadership. Yeah. And we are not doing um, anywhere near what we should be doing. And I will be making this a personal priority to reach out and ensure that um, anti-racism and racial equity is as important here as gender equity. Move on a bit more like personally, like Evelyn, what's the best bit of the job and what is the worst bit of the job? <laughs> so, so the best bit of the job is talking to students mm -hmm. and sometimes the worst bit of the job is talking to students. <laughs> so what makes you angry in life? Oh, um, I tend not to get angry. Mm. I think it's just practice. Yeah. Uh, I had, um, you know, I've raised six teenagers, yeah. and so I'm used to people being angry with me. Right. And what I do is I try to just stay really calm, mm -hmm. and then into even try to hear what's causing that mm -hmm. anger. Um, so how do you balance personally life and leadership? So it's such a big role. So how do you balance yeah. that? So I bring them together. Yeah. Uh, the, the way I first learned that I could lead mm -hmm. was when my um, middle child was two. I couldn't find a nursery place for her. Right. So I set up a nursery. <laughs> um, parent run, parent owned nursery. Yeah. There is nothing like creating a curriculum for mm -hmm. two and a half year olds with 30 other parents. So where do you see yourself in 10 years? Oh, still at Bristol. What, what sets it apart? Because you've had such a like glittering career at other big unis that probably we've all applied for. But like, what what so, does that so, for so you? So Bristol is the best. Yeah. There is no question about it. Yeah. Bristol is absolutely the best, and it's the best because it is an outstanding university which mm. has done incredibly well in something called the Research Excellence Framework. So, a bit of a different question, but this is a good question. What if you're present colleagues could describe you with three words. What do you think those three words would be? So I did this exercise with my previous colleagues just before. Oh, you've got I, answers ready. <laughs> I know. I haven't asked my present colleagues who've only known me for three and a half Yeah, weeks. that's true. But the number one word was fearless. Okay, that's that I'm start. completely fearless. Mm -hmm. And the number two word was considerate. Okay. And the number three word was fun. That's a great combination. Fearless <laughs> and considerate. Yes. So you do it, but you think about exactly. it. <laughs> yeah. So now I'm going to sort of start to wrap up the interview, but with three quick fire questions. So you're, you're no thinking, just saying. <laughs> okay. So what is your favourite song of all time? You've Got the Love. Oh, that, well, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, what's your favourite colour? Blue. Okay. And if you could have any superpower, what would it be? Ooh, the ability to cook anything, anytime, for anyone. Fantastic. That's really good. Thank you so much. For Thank you so today. much, Alice. Great. I hope you've all enjoyed it. <laughs>